The Actor Shakespeare Project opens its 11th season with its first ever production at Brighton High School, presenting one of Shakespeare's earliest, shortest, and funniest plays, The Comedy of Errors. A traveling troupe of actors decide to do this ancient Greek-inspired farce about two pairs of twins with a little gender bending and colorblind casting. Here now to tell us all about this upcoming season is the company's artistic director, Alan Burroughs, award-winning actor-director who has appeared both on Law and & Order and Law and & Order Criminal Intent. Welcome to Neighborhood. What Thank can you. I say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Now, you guys don't really have a home. You perform. How do you pick the places that you perform? They're non-conventional spaces. Right. Well, Boston is our home. Yes. We think of the whole city as our home. Okay. We like to spread ourselves around in different neighborhoods. Uh, I spend a lot of time riding around on my motorcycle looking for different venues. Oh, that's very cool. Oftentimes, we'll approach landlords who... Um, are completely unfamiliar with it, with a theater company that's going to come into a <laughs> storefront or some warehouse or uh, into a building that they have vacant for a certain period of time. So we basically build a theater every time we do a show. And, you know, code being what it is and build, building permitting and all the requirements therein, there's a lot of run-up that needs to happen. So we look for our venues about a year in advance. We don't like to just go into theaters. A couple of years ago, we did our whole season in theaters, but we really like to discover spaces because we, we, um, we incorporate the spaces into the shows. They really become one of, an, uh, one of the characters. And sometimes you the use the spaces in conventionally, unconventionally like you did at the Strand. Yeah. Now, you guys, do you find that like you're partnering with restaurants in Brighton, and do you think you'll be adding people that see you in one show in Brighton might then follow you to wherever you pop up next, you yeah. know, because they went to a Shakespeare play and survived the ordeal? Absolutely. You know. No, one of the ironies is that our audience doesn't seem to have a hard time finding us. We don't get those complaints, like, you know, they like to have good parking, yeah. you know, obviously. So we think of those things in advance. As we get older, we're entering into our second decade now. We have to think of certain creature comforts that we kind of were willing to forego <laughs> before, you know, having one single bathroom yeah. for an entire audience. Um, we just find that if people are comfortable, they're more likely to enjoy the show. Um, so this Brighton High School is, is a real discovery for us. It's really enlightening. It was introduced to me by uh, Ross McDonald of Bay Colony Shakespeare. He introduced me to the principal, Principal Pat Tutwiler. And uh, we're using this space in a very unusual way. Director David Gammons, who's done a number of shows with us, uh, just has a very, I won't give too much away, but a very precise an unusual and unique approach to how he wants to put this play into that space. Now, just so people understand, uh, at least in the publicity, it says that this is not, it, this is about a group of actors putting on this play. And right. so, as in Shakespeare's time and in many of your other productions, one actor will assume several different roles, and yeah. in this production you might have female characters playing male roles and vice versa and stuff like that. Right. I, he, he lists every character as, first and foremost, a freak in a, a sideshow. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so I don't think we need to kind of say that everyone is a freak uh, in the show, but that's basically the premise, the story within the story. And uh, there are really... Um, they're bad sideshow characters, you know. We have a set of Siamese twins who aren't really Siamese twins. We have um, jugglers who may not be able to juggle very well. And so they come up against it, and, they, and their, their only kind of conclusion is, well, let's do a Shakespeare play, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's funny because a lot of Shakespeare's plays are based on plays within plays. You have Taming of the Shrew, such like that. But Comedy of Errors, it, it's, that take isn't usually done on it. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see what David does with this. Now, you are working with, you received a grant from, I believe, the NEA to continue programming, which you've done in, with young people hmm. in high schools and in, with the Charlestown Working Theater. Right. So you're preparing future generations for 
understanding and appreciating Shakespeare? We have to. I mean, you know, the demographic of the normal theater going audience seems to be on the gray side, right? Exactly. Uh, that they just keep coming. But we have to work from the bottom up. Yeah, we, uh, part of our project work, which is why we're called Actor Shakespeare Project, is to integrate the main stage shows that we're doing with our education department. And so we work uh, in the Department of Youth Services. We work out of Charlestown Working Theater. That's our education. Base. And you, we, they do a, a version of a Shakespeare play every year, right? Yeah, and we do uh, essentially this interlocking project with our education and our performance and um, the youth that we work with uh, in the uh, DYS system. So that and do they to respond to the DYS kids? Really get into Shakespeare and they and, really do. I mean, it's, memorize parts and stuff. It's extraordinary. You know, the way they respond to the language. They're very language oriented anyway, but uh, you add that to the stories that are being told and it, they just, their attack on it is unique and it's, it's really moving to watch it as well. Our time's running out, but I wanted to ask you one more question. Mm. Each season, you, your company does some well-known plays of Shakespeare's mm. as well as some other classics and new plays, yeah. but you tend to I guess you're trying to work your way all the way through the canon, and yeah. this year you're going to be doing Henry the Sixth, Part Two, which That's is not right. usually done, but it's supposedly the best of the three plays. Yeah. You want to give us a little preview of that? Where Tina Packer will be returning to direct with us. Um, I like the idea of doing Part Two. There are many who argue that he wrote Part Two before he wrote Part One, and that he wrote Part One as a prelude. Part Two, I felt, was just like jumping into the deep end. They often conflate In those. Race. Yeah, yeah. They they conflate one, two, and three often. I don't think that I, that that serves the plays. Uh, we'll see what it's like when we run this one up the flagpole. I think people will be wanting more, and then we'll have a choice of either doing one or three. It just keeps people guessing for us. It's a very rich play, full of characters. And you, you last season you appeared in the title role of Henry the Eighth. Yeah, right? yeah. And that that's another one. I mean, Shakespeare only wrote part of that, uh, but. You know, did people respond to seeing, you know, an unusual, you know, everybody's seen Macbeth and Hamlet and yeah. all that, but yeah. few I'll, people have seen Henry VIII. Yeah, well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I was much more nervous about Henry VIII, which turned out to be very popular for good. us, than I am about Henry VI, because Henry VI is just, it's, it's much more of a vibrant, vital, dynamic piece than Henry VIII was. That's really a pageant Henry VIII yes. was. And yet, our imperative is to bring alive the relationships on stage. It's not nothing if it doesn't happen between people right there in the room in front of the audience. And that's what's really important to us. All right, to wind up, give us, what. where should people go on the web to find out about the September, October production of uh, Comedy of Errors in your full season and all your youth programs and whatever? www.actorsshakespeareproject.org. With no should. apostrophes, right? That's the, right. All the, one word. Actorsshakespeareproject.org, the whole thing. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure, Great Al. to see you. Thank you. That's it for this edition of Neighborhood Network News. Chris Lovett and the rest of the gang will be back here on Monday night. We hope you'll join us then.